Joined now by Vicki McKenna for our weekly culture cast segment. Uh, Vicki, thanks for your time today. Good to be here, dude. Well, you know, you'd like to think that there is at least one thing in this world that we can reliably re- recognize as apolitical, but sadly not. In Wisconsin, which is a purple state, I guess, uh, that really is controlled by big unions down in the blue city of Milwaukee and Madison, we have a situation where the Department of Public Instruction, the, the, the organization that oversees education in the state of Wisconsin for kindergarten through high school kids, has come out with a statement about what science is. Now, if you think science, moms and dad, is about beakers and learning and empiricism and re- research and data, think again. Talk about, Vicki, talk about what's going on in the DPI in Wisconsin. It's called the DPI Equity Statement on science. So let me just read a little bit of this so you can get a sense of, of what's going on. Just it, Basically, science is politics, and the, and the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction has just affirmed that. As members of the Wisconsin science education community, we acknowledge and know that we must teach the history and ongoing problems of racism, sexism, and other forms of prejudice in the science and education communities. Science is cultural and situated within human understanding and norms of its time, which means it has been historically created and used as part of oppressive systems. Do you get that? Science is part of oppressive systems. While there have been improvements, mainstream science practice still reflects a white male heteronormative perspective, excluding a significant portion of human experience. They go on to say, we firmly state Black Lives Matter and support efforts to promote social justice. We acknowledge that our students, families, and communities represent a wide range of knowing and being and all have valuable contributions to make within and beyond the classrooms. And if you're asking, what the hell does that have with, to do with science? The answer is nothing because science isn't science any longer. Science is politics, science is social justice, science is sociology. And so now we have seen the woking of science. And I don't know what it means 20 years from now, but it probably means we're not gonna be building buildings that stay up for very long. Well, you know, the funny thing about it is, is that it doesn't mention science. It, it says science is, and then it talks about classrooms, it talks about in the population, it talks about person, pe- people's individual particular knowledge, but it doesn't ever mention what any of that has to do with science. Can you read for me the very opening sentence again? I had, I had a bone to pick with that to start. It says, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll jump to a, a portion of it. We acknowledge and know we must teach the history and ongoing problems of racism, sexism, and other forms of prejudice in the science and education communities. Right. Science is cultural. Right. Science is cultural. No, it's not. People are cultural. Science, that, that's like saying math, well, we're already saying this, math is cultural. That somehow when black people approach math, it's not the same thing anymore. Or when uh, Hispanic people begin to study science, because they're not white, somehow the laws of physics are different. It's not true. And what the reality is, is that you are basically saying here that we're willing to change the parameters of science to actually derigorize it, to actually change it from what it is as a, an empirical, uh, it, perhaps the, the most precision-based, the most unequivocally unarguable nature, uh, aspect of how we approach the universe because of the data, because of the testing, because of the retesting. We're going to change that now because for, for cultural reasons, there aren't enough black and brown skin bodies doing it. Oh, I have more. May I share more? Teaching each other about institutional and societal racism and other prejudices and how that plays out in science education and the science enterprise, supporting educators and becoming advocates for anti-racism and social justice in their classrooms and communities, supporting all science teachers and education leaders and implementing equitable instruction and systems of support. None of that has to do with science. And you're exactly right. This is about dumbing down STEM. This is about saying we can't raise the level of achievement and raise the level of knowledge for kids to a a sufficient level where they can be successful and competitive in STEM subjects. Uh, You know, that's in there. So they're saying we're going to change our instruction models. We're going to change the content. We're going to change the actual nature of science education in order to try to accommodate the fact that we can't get enough black students or brown students in our classrooms, by the way in a school system that is statewide at 37% proficiency in reading and math for all students, and in the largest school districts, Madison and Milwaukee, under 10% proficiency in reading and mathematics 
for black students. So let's not try to fix the fact that education itself as a system has failed. Let's instead change science from science to sociology. It is not hyperbole. It is not uh, uh, a exaggeration to use the following analogy. Basketball is cultural. Basketball has cultural roots in uh, 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 the complicated nation of um, the con- the complicated notion of African American success in America. So consequently, what we have to do is we have to recognize that basketball is cultural, and in the name of cultural being woke of of equality and equity, we must make sure that basketball is played in a way that everyone can play it at the highest levels. So we're going to have to break the monopoly uh, of seven foot tall. African-Americans. We're going to have to get women on the court. We're going to have to get disabled people on the court, making the kind of money in the name of equity that professional basketball players make. That is seriously a a legitimate comparison, it seems to me. I I agree with you, except that what the left will say, because remember now, hypocrisy is a condition of humanity, but it's a cancer of the left. They live, drink, and eat hypocrisy. They would say, Duke Pessa, you're such a white supremacist. That is the most anti anti racist thing I've ever heard. Because of course, if there are areas in in culture where black people or brown people succeed, then you you in, in, enhance that. If there are places in culture where black people or brown people fail, and by the way, let's expand this. It's also trans people or women or gay people succeed or fail. It, it is if they're failing anywhere, it's all you know, heteronormative white males, white male Christians fault, or or people who are like me who are considered self-loathing because I simply won't get woke on progressive social justice and them telling me that in order to feel like a real woman, I should accept that a man with a penis should be peeing next to me. You know, that 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 is how what they what they essentially say is everything that is enhancing minorities or minority participation stays anything that that they that that those groups are not succeeding right now at has to change and if that means dumbing down standards in order to get more success for black brown lgbt whatever um, then that's what they're willing to do. And that's what this statement says about science. Yeah, and they're literally uh, willing to segregate to get it. So that, yeah. so, so that we don't encroach on black achievements or Hispanic achievements. White people are not allowed to participate in those things. They must become blacker and browner in the name of justice. But uh, 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 all that deals with so-called white culture has to be completely disseminated. And I'll go one step further. You, with the very, I think the very opening line of what you said, I don't know if you can, if you can read it again, Again, Vicky, it included the word it included the word equity and science. Do you have that sentence? I can find it, Duke, because oh, anything for you, my friend. <laughs> Their goal is to support all science teachers and education leaders in implementing equitable instruction and systems of support. Yeah, that's my point. Equity is not about equality, as we know. Equity is about outcomes becoming the same. And my humble suggestion, maybe my last word on this for the, for the entire segment, and I'll let you finish up, Vicki, is equity means that everything comes out the same no matter what you do. And if we're going to have to apply that to science, because that's what they're saying, that means science itself has to change. So what happens in science comes out fair. And by doing that, you are destroying what science is. Science has nothing to do with fairness. It's about what actually is. So when you apply equity to science, of all other disciplines of knowledge, you have undercut completely science forever. And I'll, and I'll end with this. I don't know how many people have had a chance to read The Forgotten Man by Amity Schles, a wonderful book. You can rip right through it. It's fascinating to read. But in one portion, she describes U.S. Um, government leaders going over to the Soviet Union and marveling at all this, this incredible experiment. Um, and, and nobody bothered to mention that the engineers, the scientists, the people who knew how to build mines, run mines, fix you know, machines and mines, you know, essentially do the technological things that supported a successful modern economy were all removed from their positions and imprisoned in gulags because they were they were they were a, um, a bourgeoisie. So that's essentially what they're saying. What what DPI is saying is that we're going to remove the bourgeoisie, the white people. We're the, we're the bourgeoisie. OK, we're the new uh, bourgeoisie. We're going to remove the white people because they're the problem. This is a revolution against the white people. Well, when it was when we when we when we hadn't swapped out race and we were still talking about class, 
It was getting rid of the smart people. It was getting rid of the, the people who actually understood these things. And what happened in the Soviet Union? Their minds shut down. Their economy, their technology ground to a halt, uh, as you could read a, a description of it in this book that I'm talking about. Everything failed because of this idea. And, and simply swapping out race for class is not going to make the idea any more meaningful or any more successful. This is going to end in equity, all right, and it will be equal misery for the entire country. That is a great A rant, and we're going to stop it right there. Fantastic. Vicki McKenna, CultureCast, thanks for your time today. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. Most of you know our show is being censored by big tech. While this makes it harder to meet the cost of producing the show, that's part of it. It also demonstrates that we must be having tremendous success or they wouldn't bother to try to shut us down. If you like hearing truth and common sense with a love for freedom, please join the Patriot Club with a one-time $99 tax-deductible donation. And you'll get this sweet vessel of joy as part of a thank you for joining the Patriot Club. Etched with the American flag and the words freedom, never tasted so good. All you have to do is visit patriotclub.us and become a Patriot member today. That's patriotclub.us. Thank you and God bless.